In the previous two lessons, we looked at two simple sorting algorithms, the bubble sort and insertion sort algorithms. Both of these are good at working with smaller lists, but poor at sorting large lists. The merge sort algorithm is an algorithm that will put a list of data into some form of order, much like the bubble sort and insertion sort algorithm. However, a merge sort algorithm is slightly more complex. In order to sort data, it creates pairs of smaller lists within the main list, all of which you need to keep track of in memory, which is why it can be very memory intensive. The merge sort algorithm is an example of a divide and conquer algorithm. The idea is that you break down your main problem into smaller identical problems. You then solve each of these smaller problems, combining the solutions until you have solved the original one. The merge sort process works like this. You break down your list into two sublists. Continue to break these sublists in half until all data is in its own individual sublist. You then merge and sort the individual data items into pairs. Continue to merge and sort the sublists until you are back to your original list that is now sorted. The main use of the merge sort is on large lists of unsorted data. The merge sort algorithm starts with the divide stage. This is where any list is broken down into sublists until you get to a final set of sublists of length 1. Consider this list of letters. We first break this list down into two sublists. Each of these lists needs to be divided again. So now we have four sublists, each of length 1. This is the end of the divide stage. Now that we have our original list broken down into individual sublists, we now need to sort our lists and merge them back together. This is known as the merge stage. We're going to sort our list of letters alphabetically from A to Z. However, we can sort in either direction with a merge sort. First we have to swap our individual letters around in the pairs they were split up into. So our two letters on the left, N and F, have to be swapped around as F is before N in the alphabet. The two letters on the right do not need to be swapped around as they're already in alphabetical order. Next, we merge these individual values back into their pairs. At the next stage of this process, we need to merge these two lists together back into our original list. To do this, we will need to compare the elements in our left list to the right list. We will therefore start with the first letter of the left list and the first letter of the right list. We can see that F is lower than K, therefore F can go into our original list and is removed from our left list. This leaves us with a left list that has one value and a right list that has two values. Now we again compare the first value of the left list with the first value of the right list. We can see that k is lower than n in the alphabet, therefore k can go into our original list and is removed from our right list. This leaves us with one value in both our left and right lists. Now we compare these two values in our left and right list. We can see that L is lower than N in the alphabet. Therefore, L can go into our original list and is moved from our right list. This just leaves us with our left list containing the letter N. We can therefore add this to the end of the list. So now we have a perfectly sorted list alphabetically from A to Z. Let's now work through a larger example of the merge sort algorithm so we can be sure we understand exactly how it works. The following sequence shows how this merge sort algorithm might work. Let's assume we define an array or list of numbers like this. Firstly, we begin the divide stage and break this up into two sublists. We continue to break this up further into four sublists. Finally, we break them up into eight individual sublists of length 1. This is our divide stage completed. At this point, we can start sorting and merging our data. 
we take the final sublist and start to sort the individual values into their pairs. Next, we take our pairs and sort the individual values back together in groups of four. Finally, we can sort these two groups of four together into our final complete and sorted list. This is our merge sort completed. So, one of the ways of sorting data is called the merge sort. It works by breaking your original list down until you have a set of lists with a single item in them. You then sort each pair of items and merge them. You keep repeating this process until you get back to your original list. It is a useful algorithm on large sets of data. Because you have to keep track of so many sublists, it can take quite a bit of memory in the computer.